I oh my god, it's been it's been a crazy day actually. Let me let me try to adjust my microphone here for a second. So uh, how are we doing, folks? It's uh, this is my part two of my uh, recording here. Um, Missouri Game Convention Two has come and gone, and uh, I have so much to show you guys that instead of just doing pictures, uh, it's been a I don't think I've ever done one of these where I actually show what I got. So why not? Why not I actually show you guys what I got at Missouri Game Convention 2? So I actually uh, took about $250 for the whole convention this weekend and technically spent about $170, $180. I think I feel, I feel that I did pretty dang good. So uh, I've got everything laying around me in certain places. So why don't we start with... Uh, the original Nintendo, which I've got down here. Uh, and again, to those who watched my previous video with the uh, with my uh, my whole story post talk thing, that thing was lengthy, but it was it, it uh, to me. I think it's worth a watch. I mean, there's a lot of photos in there, a lot of stories, which are which are really good. So uh, let's go ahead and start here with my Nintendo games. Uh, I'm going to start here with. Knowing that I, I, I don't I, I know for sure this is a really hard game to play. I like difficult games, especially like uh, Cobra Triangle or uh, people say Battletoads is hard, but really it's it's all about figuring out the game. But I know for sure Capcom had at a time where uh, they like to screw around with people, and that was Street Fighter 2010. Um, <laughs> you see there, I got it for eight bucks, so I actually did pretty good on finding this. Um, I'm actually glad to have this for my collection. So, um, on top of that, I was actually able to find a DuckTales. I'm actually really excited to have this, uh, this DuckTales. Uh, I know Swope actually got one, my good friend Ken's Increase on, on Twitch. And I hate to say it, buddy, but I paid cheaper which thank you Kurt from st. Louis retro gamers for selling this to me for cheaper uh, especially it was I think it was going for 12 and he got it to me for 10 and on top of that I actually have a manual with it which never seen the manual it's kind of cool to actually have so that will stay in the collection for sure and then on top of that um, I think it's funny that I found this um, this is actually me and my brother always debate about which is the better hockey for the Nintendo there's always two go-to's. He likes Nintendo Ice Hockey, and I actually liked Blades of Steel. And uh, to me, I felt this game was actually really much better. And uh, surprisingly, that was only three bucks. And uh, even sho shocking, I purchased this and put it in my backpack. I'm like, ah, cool, I've been needing to get a Blades of Steel. And uh, there's actually a manual with it. I was kind of shocked to see this. I wouldn't. I would like to see if I could find a way to actually find a really good, decent, clean box for this. And because uh, I mean, I don't play a lot of sports games. Um, technically, on the Nintendo, I only play at least two, three sports games. Well, four sports games. Uh, for my, I'm not a big football guy, but I'll play Tecmo Super Bowl. That's a winner, and I don't actually have that in my collection. I'm gonna need to find that for my collection. Um, baseball, uh, everybody, I hopefully will, will agree to this. The original RBI baseball, hands down, best baseball you can play. No joke. And I think it's really cool to see that people actually put modern rosters into it too. So I'm going to need to get a way to get a flashable cartridge to make that. Um, but, uh, the other two would be, uh, my good friend, uh, Brody, 8-Bit Brody. He was at this convention as well. And I was joking with him and, uh, <laughs> I did answer. It's like you, your love is to double dribble, and I, I, I agree. You go for it. To, to, for my sports game, that's Blades of Steel. I'm sorry, I just love saying it that, that way. Like in the game, it's weird to actually hear that that digitized digitized voice in that. But I did joke about it. I said, well, really, in in truth, it's race driving, Ra uh, race driving a go go on my PlayStation. Uh, but uh, Blades of Steel is definitely, and then. What was the last one? So there's hockey, baseball, football, and there was one more. I can't remember. Goodness, what is wrong with me? Uh, uh, you know what? I forgot it. We'll, we'll just continue on. But either way, I was glad to find this for cheap and with a manual. So awesome. Um, let's see here. Oh, here we go. 
Um, we'll move on to Super Nintendo, which really um, I have on loaner with uh, over with uh, 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 Tony Tony Brazel uh, Brazel the gamer. I'm 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 zoning out because I just got done with work and I haven't gotten a lot of sleep the last couple days. But I gave uh, I let him borrow a copy of Top Gear that I found for a dollar. Uh, and then, for sure, I also purchased for a dollar Bill Walsh, Walsh College Football. Now, why did I buy this? Actually, I'm using this cartridge for a special project. So, uh, yeah, um, this will not be college football down the road. Um, hint, hint, uh, my, my project involves barrel rolls and an official release. There's your clues. So for one dollar, I couldn't complain. Top Gear for a buck as well. I couldn't pass that. And uh, Tony's borrowing it right now. Um, I'm gonna give that copy to my brother. Uh, I haven't talked to him lately. He said he did find a Super Nintendo. So uh, hopefully he didn't pick up a uh, Top Gear because if he did, then I'm just gonna give that Top Gear to Tony. Well, stay tuned on that part. So I also picked up. Uh, I was able to find uh, Super Famicom games and. and if you haven't seen, I actually enjoy Super Famicom games, and especially learning about from uh, Try and Corey from My Life in Gaming with patching cartridges, because don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, you can play these and emulate them and that's it. Really? I got my Retron 5 over here, and I, I'm in the middle of playing Chrono Trigger with a physical cartridge, a physical Japanese cartridge, and it's patched, it's English patched for a US version. And uh, for this, I'm really glad to find it because I've seen it before and I should have grabbed it and I never did. But I love mech games. Um, I need to sit down and play the first of this. But then I also love uh, Metal Warriors and Cybernator slash Assault Suits uh, Falcon. And uh, that is uh, Front Mission Gun Hazard. This is supposedly a really good game. I've been told to play this. I'm really glad to actually have this now in my collection. I didn't pay like no more than five bucks for this. So I know there's an English translation of this. I can patch it through with the Retron 5 and it'd be great to add to my collection. So to the vendor who sold me this, thank you very much. Um, at the same time, when I bought my, uh, what is it? Uh, where I bought my uh, Street Fighter, um, I was able to get this and if you guys haven't known I'm a big racing fan and don't get me wrong the Dreamcast version of this is the best version you can get for home console but I had to complete uh, the, the trio and that would be Rush 2049 for the N64 uh, really incredible racing game still sit down and play this on the Dreamcast I'll more than likely also play this on the N64 as well because they, they both play very similarly uh, the only difference is, is that you need the expansion pack to play all the extra tracks and uh, luckily I've got an expansion pack in my Nintendo 64 so no complaints but uh, even though it says 15 on here I got this and the Street Fighter together I think for about $18 so I actually technically got this for like maybe 11 bucks or something either way uh, really glad I have this for my collection so now I have the trio of Rush and uh, to this day um, it's unfortunate that Warner Brothers owns the license of this game now and it's like come on guys make a new rush but don't do it like LA Rush bring this style back I we deserve a style of this so uh, continuing on we're, we've got like two more cheapies uh, I actually have a freebie here and uh, uh, I was part of uh, since I'm part of St. Louis St. Louis retro gamers uh, my good man Matt Gurley uh, who is who's a huge Steve Brule fan? This is pretty awesome for your health. And uh, sure enough, uh, he actually uh, had a contest to win a free game, and uh, that free game is actually right here. I got to pick it up at Missouri Game Convention, and that's actually Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. And surprisingly enough, um, I had the original Metal Gear Solid when I was younger. When I actually got my PlayStation, I got a greatest hits edition of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I got my PlayStation in 99, the next year I actually got Metal Gear Solid with it, and for it actually, and uh, I got a greatest hits model, which kind of, you know, it got me by, it was no problem, and I always wanted to get this, but nobody ever had it. 
and I, I was a big fan of the VR missions. I always like to practice on my VR missions and such, and I'm actually glad to have this in my collection now. But on top of that, I was made fun of. Uh, that reason is, is because I didn't actually have a copy of Metal Gear Solid for my PlayStation collection. And it's it's growing slowly. It's I'm picking up titles every blue moon for it. Um, I know for sure when I was younger I had a ton of PlayStation games, but uh, I slowly got rid of them. And uh, luckily enough, uh, because I was made fun of it, I put my I put a hit list out I, 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 with my list of games that I want to get, and I got very lucky. And uh, sure enough, not only did I get another copy of Metal Gear Solid, but I also got a Metal Gear Solid with a black label. So the original black label of Metal Gear Solid. And on top of that, uh, let me go ahead and open this for you. The manual is actually inside, so I'm very happy to see that the manual is in here. And both discs are actually pristine. I'm very happy to have this. Um, so really, I have now Metal Gear Solid, the original, on with Black Label. And I also have VR Missions Black Label as well, which is great. This is awesome to have. I'm a huge Metal Gear fan. And especially Metal Gear Solid series, because I do have Twin Snakes uh, for the GameCube. But... Uh, I mean, still having this in my collection and looking at it, it has that red metallic, it just, memories, nostalgia, uh, and, and you're like, every little cliche thing you say, but it really, I'm, I'm glad to have this. Uh, I still remember the first time I played this with my friend Ian, he invited me over and we played on his big screen TV. It was, I just sat back and ate popcorn while he played through it. It was, it was so good. We got through disc one and that was as far as I ever got when I played it for the first time. Uh, but I've already beaten it. Great game. Uh, crazy story, and I'm dropping stuff here. What's going on? But uh, really glad to have that for my collection. Uh, so from there, uh, we go t into the more expensive stuff. So uh, there were some other things that I kept my eye out for. Um, there was a primary system I was looking for, which I did get. It's right over here, but I'm going to save that for last. But there were a couple titles I was actually very surprised to get. And one of them I got from one of my favorite little YouTube guys now. Uh, he actually personally friended me on Facebook, and, and that would be Brody, 8-Bit Brody. Um, I am very happy to, that you, you were able to let me get this for a little discount, um, especially uh, in, in a condition like this. I was showing a lot of the guys in the group that I found this and they were looking at it and go wow this is actually one of the cleanest copies we've seen and uh, sure enough that would be Sonic CD oh my goodness I am so happy to have this and, and don't get me wrong both the Japanese version and the US versions both have great soundtracks but uh, to actually finally have a copy of this physically because I have this on Steam and but really to have an actual physical copy of this. I remember playing this as a kid and going to a, friend, a friend's place, uh, Keegan back in the day, I used to hang around with in like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And he would have this and we'd stay up all night playing it. And uh, it, it's just finally, I have my own version. And he had it for, for it was a bit pricey, but uh, no lie, uh, he gave me a little discount for it. And uh, I thanked him for it. I, I know for sure because he sold me that. I went back and saw him, and I had a box of stuff that I was selling. And uh, because of most of the good stuff was gone. Oh my God! Look at my hair. My hair is crazy. Uh, I definitely need a haircut. I am totally rocking the uh, Master Higgins look, which is pretty dope. I got no problem with that. I love Adventure Island. Um, but uh, I gave him my copy of Final Fantasy VII PC version. And he's like, I have never seen anything like this. I'm like, well, take it. I, I don't want anything for it. I've got the Steam version now, so who cares? And I've already got a pristine copy of Final Fantasy VII up, up on my collection with uh, with the manual and all that. So I didn't mind lo I didn't mind giving it away. So he was actually pretty ecstatic to get it. He goes, I have, he, seriously, I have never seen anything like this. And I was like, well, there's something pretty cool for your collection. Go for it. So, uh, Brody, enjoy the Final Fantasy VII that I gave you. Thank you again for the Sonic CD, my good man. I'll keep supporting you on your uh, YouTube channel. And uh, keep the cringe and keep the funny coming. And enjoy Montreal while you're up there too, buddy. Um, going, moving along, um, I came across a vendor who is not too far from Brody. I can't remember the gentleman's name. 
but uh, he had a couple of unique titles, especially in a small box, that were all imports. And sure enough, I spotted this on the second day. I saw it actually on the first day. I didn't say anything, but on the second day, I said I came up to him and saw it was still there. I said, "Tell you what, if this is still in your collection at the end of the con or middle or end of con, I will come back and offer you twenty bucks cash right here, right now, easy twenty, done." And sure enough, uh, about almost done with the con, I went back and it was still there. And I asked, I said, you want to make an easy 20? And he goes, you know what? Go for it. I've had some people look at it, but they don't want it. Uh, but uh, I am a big fighting fan. Um, I, I, I don't mind the newer stuff, but I'm more of an old school fan. Uh, Till this day, Street Fighter Alpha, uh, not Street Fighter Alpha, uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike will always be my favorite. No joke. Uh, but I did also get my favorite Alpha game. And that would be actually uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3, which actually in, Jap in Japan, that's uh, Street Fighter Al uh, Street Fighter Zero 3. And this is actually the Dreamcast version, which is actually a perfect port. Uh, I'm very happy to have this. And uh, I know there's a... Uh, Corey let me know that there is a... Uh, there's a network version which supports VGA surprisingly, but this one doesn't. But I don't. I don't. Oh, actually, it does support VGA. I. I'll be darned. It actually, says it right there. VGA. So I do get to play this on my VGA connection. Uh, I was talking with Adam Korlick. If you saw in the last video, I was having some issues getting a VGA converter to HDMI to upscale, and uh, so I can capture it on my. Elgato uh, Game Capture HD. So he gave me some suggestions. I am looking towards a, an Akuma box, possibly down the road, and maybe a different capture card. But I know for sure he. I asked him, I said, "Is there any other alternatives?" And he, he gave me some references. But again, thank you on that one, uh, Adam, and uh, and and thank you to the to the to the vendor because I never ever ever purchased a Japanese import of uh, any game for my Dreamcast, and now I do, and I have my favorite Street Fighter Alpha of it. So, uh, uh, the same guy actually had two other titles. I was very interested. Adam from the, 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 what was it? The, the dad podcast. I can't remember. I'm sorry for, for not remembering, but I do remember his name, Adam. And, uh, he purchased the really pricey import that was for the Saturn. And that was the, the Dungeons and Dragons arcade ports, which were really good, but he also had for for forty, and I wish I kind of had maybe a couple extra bucks in my pocket. He had a Project Justice import, and it was like mm, tempting, so tempting, but I wasn't able to get it. So, who knows? Maybe down the road I'll find a copy one way or another. So, with that, uh, now we go into the price, like the really pricey stuff. Uh, I wouldn't say pricey, but more of my priority things I was looking for. And sure enough, it's sitting right over here, and I'm very happy to have this. Um, I am, I'm a big, I'm also a big Sega fan. And as you see there, I've got a Sega CD and a Sega Dreamcast, and um, I've always borrowed this console from a friend of mine. And before he moved away, my friend Ian, same one with the Metal Gear Solid situation. Um, he let me borrow this console, and he, uh, and I felt bad that he was moving away. And I was like, "No, I shouldn't keep this. You need to take it with you." And uh, to this day, I think he still has it. And uh, I, I've always told myself I need to find my own. And sure enough, uh, Joseph from Cerulean Games had one and had it at a very decent price. Uh, let me grab it here. From 1995 as the PlayStation competitor, the Sega Saturn. I am very happy to have this. Uh, it is a Model 2 variation. It is super clean. And what's really funny is that Corey from My Life in Gaming was standing next to me when I purchased this. And he goes, dude, let me open the box. Let me check this out for you. And he's giving me, he goes, it's a Model 2. So it's in, he goes, it's in really good shape. I got this for, for $50. And I'll admit it. Sorry, sorry, Joe. I was I was trying to get it a little cheaper, and you know everybody haggles. But I understood that when you said that's as low as you can go. And you know what? Even Corey's like, dude, you couldn't get a cleaner one like this for cheaper. He goes, you got a damn good deal. The only downfall was with this is that it came with an RF uh, translator, like that that RF modulation. Which, come on, it's like the worst picture you can get. But. Uh, 
luckily a vendor two two tables down uh, was selling this so I actually have S video and Saturday night I sat down and played my Sega Saturn for the first time and played a game which I actually have down here I'll show in my collection in a minute um, holy crap does the picture pop with actually S video and I've got my little 12 inch Toshiba over here that I play on I play all my retro stuff on uh, mostly my my tube TV over here my CRT and uh, it does S video component uh, the only thing it doesn't do is progressive but it, you know what you get, you get what you can especially if it was a goodwill purchase but uh, the colors really pop with having something like that like this especially before you go into RGB or or hopefully I know for sure down the road retro RGB is actually doing a component cable for it so I might invest in some of those down the road now uh, the game I bought on Saturday let me grab it here Oh goodness, but uh, I'm really glad to have this, the, the Sega Saturn, because the first game I purchased immediately, and I found it for five bucks, no complaints, the disc was great, the case is a little rough, but uh, it is like the number number one game to grab, especially since it's really cheap and it's very fun to play, especially the arcade version. I mean, come on, seriously, Sega Rally, you gotta go with Sega Rally, no joke great freaking game and uh boy man does this have it still to this day and, it, it, and when i was playing this with this video the, the colors just pop it's like holy hell and and man so so much good memories now, i would love to find a new case for this because this is not the, the the not for sale variation this is the actual retail version and it comes in that silver look and uh, I know for sure if I actually were able to find a really nice case for this, uh, it was, this would look really good. And uh, for sure, the, the disc is in here. The disc is in great shape. Actually, it's there's there's not even a mark on it, and it, it's in fantastic condition. So hopefully down the road, I will find a new case for this. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of some searching. And I, you know what? I'll go ahead and bring it up. Uh, I kind of have shot myself in the foot for buying a Sega Saturn because it is one of the most expensive consoles to collect for. Um, not the, that would be Neo Geo, but uh, pretty close. <laughs> like if you want to go find uh, complete inbox for variations or even just discs of certain games, you're going to be spending, spending a pretty penny. <laughs> Uh, just just to give you an idea shine just just go look up shining force 3 or shining of the holy ark it is like oh god but uh, i may play those games down the road maybe guardian heroes but i know guardian heroes is like ridiculously expensive with having that purchase uh, i went ahead and uh found a couple of other games now, I know for sure this is not the best variation, but I, but I will admit it, I'm a big Sega Fighting fan as well, and, and, and I enjoy Virtual Fighter, and uh, this is the original Virtual Fighter, this is the not for resale vir Virtual Fighter, but that's okay. I mean, this is pretty much the packing game variation, and it's actually, uh, come to find out, it's this is the original pack-in variation, so you actually got it in a jewel case like this, so I'm going to replace the jewel case for it to make it look nice. Uh, but... Uh, I can, down the road, I know for sure I could probably find a Virtual Fighter remix, which actually I don't like the look of it. But if there's a Virtual Fighter, you have to pick up. I mean, Virtual Fighter 3 TB is okay on the Dreamcast. Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution is great. Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown on the on the 360 is effing fantastic. But the go-to Virtual Fighter for me, it, and still to this day, is almost probably the greatest port you can get. Um, compared to actually if you if you had an arcade version of this is the good old virtual fighter 2 and again uh, this is not the re not for resale variation this is actually the retail copy and it, again you can see it's got the silver casing on it or the silver look on it which it looks great uh, it's in excellent condition and I actually was able to snag this for $12 
another vendor had this, and uh, we had it for fifteen, and I was able to talk to twelve because I because he he was I was asking if he had any Saturn, and he goes, if you find one, I've got a couple Saturn games, and I came back, and I was like, I got a Saturn, and sure enough, he goes, I don't have much, but I do have a Virtual Fighter too, and I'm like, how much is it going for? And he goes, well, it's going for fifteen, but since you just you know popped your cherry with a Saturn, I'll give it to you for twelve, and it's. It looks great. It, it, it just just looking at these cases, it's so 90s. I love it. And uh, yeah, great game, great game. I'm probably gonna play this after I'm done here with this video. Um, another one that uh, I was actually excited to find. Um, I actually discovered this, and uh, another vendor, if I remember, if I remember his name correctly, it was another Kurt. And him and his son were there with the, with a the table, and they were selling stuff. And uh, I saw this in his collection, and uh, I got very curious with it, and he said, well, he actually had a Saturn there, a Saturn Model 1 playing, and they had Virtual Fighter 2 in it, which I got to play a little bit, yeah. Um, he went ahead and popped this in, I'm like, actually, that's pretty good. And uh, he was able to let me buy this one for $12 as well, because unfortunately that was all that was left in my wallet at that time, sorry buddy. Yeah, but he was really cool to let me go with it with that with that price. But uh, I actually picked up high velocity, and what's really unique is that it's mountain racing challenge. And uh, uh, two things: I love mountain racing, like Initial D, and uh, especially on top of that, it's an Atlas game. Kind of shocking. And usually, you know, same thing with A Atlas with like. Square Soft or Square Enix, when they go out of their boundaries and try different types of games, sometimes they're not bad. I mean, I mean, look at Square. I mean, they made Einhander and Energize. Those are great. With uh, High Velocity, I got kind of lucky here. This actually plays like a, like a track game, but uh, it has mountains and it has Japanese import cars. So it's like, what can go wrong? And uh, all it needs is a little bit of some Eurobeat and we're good to go. But it's actually in a really good shape. Um, I haven't even looked up any of the prices of like what these actually are really going for. But for 12 bucks, I couldn't complain. So if it, even if I spent a little more than I'm supposed to, eh, that's okay. It's all good. But uh, yeah, I actually have this in my collection. And it even has the little sponge in it too to, to protect the disc. And uh, that's pretty much it for my Saturn... U.S. stuff. So uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of got two more games from my Saturn, but the unfortunate thing is I can't play them yet. Uh, luckily, when Corey from My Life in Gaming was sitting next to me after I purchased the Saturn, he was explaining, you know, uh, you should look into pseudo Saturn, pseudo pseudo Saturn, which involves getting an action replay cartridge or a Game Shark cartridge and flashing it. And luckily enough, my good man Casten. Uh, uh, he is one of my best friends. Uh, he actually has a Model 2, which he admits he felt really bad because he did the disc swap method and uh, finally got the pseudo Saturn stuff. Uh, but uh, since then, he's able to get imports for cheap. And if you want to, you can get burden games if you want as well, which I don't care. But uh, really, um, there are a couple import titles I know I will definitely buy. And uh, hopefully down the road, I'll maybe find a, a layer section slash galactic attack or whatever it's called. But you know what game I'm talking about. Title made it. Great freaking soundtrack, by the way. Uh, but I was able to pick up these both for 20 bucks, And I was really happy to get them. They actually came from the same vendor that had my Alpha 3 that I purchased. And uh, I bought these two first before, and then that's when I spotted this. And... Uh, that, that became very lucky to get that. But uh, I did pick up some more great Capcom fighters from the 90s. And that's actually the original Street Fighter Zero, which is Street Fighter Alpha. And also picked up, I was really shocked to, sign, to find this, was Vampire Hunter, which is actually Dark Stalkers. It's the sequel. And uh, I'm really, really happy to have both of these in my collection so when I get my pseudo Saturn set up done I know for sure I'll be playing the hell out of these and if you didn't notice I'll go ahead and I've got the controller sitting here out of all the classic controllers that I enjoy playing on there we go the Sega Saturn controller 
is one of the best for fighting. I mean, look, there, there you go. That's that's all you need. You got you got your D-pad. If I can look at it right, D-pad, and your six buttons. So for Street Fighter stuff, you got your high punches, your your punches, and your kicks. That's all you need. We're good. And, uh, and even though this is a Model Two cartridge with my Model Two uh, console, doesn't bother me. I do like this variation of the of the Sega Saturn uh, controller. Uh, the Model Ones look awesome as hell too. But uh, since I got a Model Two, I, I need a Model Two controller, and it, it's comfortable. It's it's really, I mean, look at that. It's 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 so comfortable. And uh, especially when I know for sure when I'm going to get uh, Galactic Attack or Layer Section. Um, I remember playing that all the time on the Saturn with this. Another game I'm really looking forward to playing on the Sega Saturn. I know I can get it on the PlayStation. And, and either way, Saturn or PlayStation variation is going to be really freaking expensive. Uh, is Thunder Force 5. Yes. So, um, that's about it. I don't have any uh, anything else except for uh, Swope, you're an asshole for taking my freebie out of my backpack. Uh, I was supposed to give that to my boss. So hopefully you'll return that soon so I can return it to my boss. I actually got one of those uh, Namco TV plug and play things that has like Pac-Man and uh, Rally X and uh, Galaga. I think it has that and Buscodian and a couple of others. But either way, um, I'm going to give that to my boss. And uh, I did, uh, I do have one more thing, and I might as well go ahead and add it right here. And uh, I was really happy to actually pick this up. I was supposed to have it on Saturday. There was a game plan. I talked to Riggs about it. He thought it was a great idea. But then Saturday, the United States Post Office screwed up. Thanks, you, the United States Postal Office. But you know what? It is what it is. So uh, I actually got a reproduction import in today. And mind you, I say it's a reproduction import. Uh, the main thing is, is that um, this game, finding it on cartridge is almost impossible unless you find a certain cartridge that has the game on it. Uh, this kind of has uh, a legacy of either you can only get it through the Satella view or through the Nintendo Power kiosks that they had in Japan. And I actually have it over here on my bed here. It's sitting in the box. Let me grab this real quick. I've already put pictures up, and I might as well go ahead and show you guys here. And uh, I had the packaging and stuff, so we'll take that out of there. We'll take this. And take it out of the bubble wrap. It's still actually in its bag. And let me tell you, it looks legit. It actually has kind of a, uh, a reflective uh, label on here, and it looks professionally done. And it looks incredibly good. And to my knowledge, I don't think there's ever a cartridge variation of this, but... Unless you had like the Nintendo Power variation, but this looks 100% legit, and I am so happy to have this. Uh, I am a huge fan of intelligence system games. Uh, one series in particular that I enjoy so much, and they really need to recap into it. Uh, especially, I think we're all getting sick of Fire Emblem, and that's a, that's the other variation of a, a strategy uh, strategy games. Uh, that would be my Super Famicom Wars. I am so happy to have this. And this was a pretty penny to get. It was custom made over in Japan. Uh, it was put together. It, it feel it doesn't feel cheap. I mean, you can, you can it feels like a legit cartridge. And it, I don't know how they did this. I would like to get my tools back. Uh, I know Kasten's borrowing them still, but I'd like to get my tools and open this to actually see how the board looks. But, uh, other than that, uh, to finally have Super Famicom Wars for the uh, for the Super Famicom, um, this is freaking awesome. Now it's unfortunate there is no translation patch for this yet, but from experience already playing Advance Wars all the time when I was younger, when it came out, um, it plays the same way. This is just the predecessor to it. Um, I am probably going to have a special where. I'm going to get a couple of us together and play this and see how everything goes. Uh, I know for sure the plan was with Riggs was to see if we can get it on stream in the stream where it was going to be me, Reggie, Kelsey, and uh, Riggs and we do like Japanese 101 and he, we would go through the game and try to play a couple of rounds while he was teaching us what something would say 
and uh, fortunately, because it didn't make it in time, um, it's an, it was unfortunate we didn't get to play it. But hey, you know what? I have it. There's always next year. So Riggs, if you're listening, buddy, we can do it next year if you want. So uh, if if there's a Missouri Game Con three, which who knows? We'll see how that goes. But uh, that would that's about it. That's that's pretty much all of my con finds and, and my little extra here, which whoa, that's so nice. But uh, I, I had a blast, and uh, I pretty much you know the, the Sega Saturn was a priority to find, and getting a couple games for it, and I got lucky because even though it only came with an RF uh, adapter or an RF modulator, uh, I was able to find the S video cables, and that makes a world of a difference. So uh, I know for sure right now I'm pretty much spent. Um, I know. My Sonic Mania has actually uh, been shipped, and I should be expecting it hopefully maybe tomorrow or probably Wednesday just before my surgery. And surgery, to remind you all again, is on Thursday. Um, I've had some kind of weird things happen in the last couple days, and remember, your, your gallbladder is right here. It's right in this vicinity, below your, your your right breast, if you want to count that, because I have man boobs. But uh, the muscles around my gallbladder, I have two stones where it's, at, where it's at, and the muscles start to spasm a little, and my stones have been starting to move. It's a really weird feeling, and it, it doesn't feel comfortable. Sometimes it's a little painful. Uh, I know for sure that uh, I have one large stone and one other stone that's at least one inch in diameter and uh, they will be coming out this Thursday so hopefully the birth of my gallbladder will be very easy and painless so uh, we'll keep you up to date on that uh, I'll have it on Facebook and Twitter keeping people updated I know for sure everybody at the con was asking even our guests were, at, were asking me if uh, to keep them in touch to let them know how the surgery went but uh, other than that um, that's about it folks so uh, thanks for stopping by, and hopefully if you went to Missouri Game Convention too, uh, you had a good time. And, it, and I know for sure, I know I've been seeing some posts go up of uh, people buying of their purchases and uh, their fines. And hopefully if this happens again next year, we'll find some even cooler stuff. So until then, my friends, stay fresh, stay clean, and I'll see you next time. Adios.